Hello everyone, Dr. Sri Lakshmi here from Basis Diary team. We shall see the steps of respiratory system examination today. In this station, you will have six minutes with the patient and four minutes with the examiner. We shall see what are the steps. As you enter the room, first read the instructions which have been given. Secondly, look around for clues, like there could be sputum cups, MDI inhalers, nebulization machines, or walking aids, which could be related or unrelated to the respiratory system. Next, sanitize your hand. Now, respiratory system includes examination of general system examination and examination of the system, that is the chest. So, we shall start with examination of hands. Look for clubbing. Clubbing is an important examination in respiratory system. So, carefully look for clubbing. Ask the patient to turn the hands. Look for palmar erythema. Look for any nicotine stains. Also, ask the patient to keep the hands outstretched and look for flap. Can you please just keep the hands straight for me? Yes. yes. Run along the hands and look for any AV fistulas or thrill. It could be working or failed fistulas because there are cases where we have chronic kidney disease patients with respiratory system findings like pleural effusions or fibrosis. Also, check for the pulse rate. Quickly, that is around for 15 seconds. Along with that, keep carefully note the respiratory rate, which is an important finding which you have to note in respiratory system examination. The rate and the pattern of breathing is important. Next, look for pallor. Evert the lower eyelid and ask the patient to look up. Look for pallor or ruddy conjunctiva or polycythemia, which might be a common association in COPD or respiratory cases. Ask the patient to look down. Please look down for me. Look for ictrus. Look at the oral cavity. Can you put out the tongue for me? Can you put the tongue at the floor of the mouth? Okay. Sorry. And look at the floor of the mouth. Next, examine for the lymph nodes. Start on one side and then on the other side. Look for submental, submandibular, upper, middle and lower cervical, skelly and supraclavicular lymph nodes. Finish on one side, followed by the other. Just like this. Ah. Percussion. You need to start by percussing directly over the clavicle and supraclavicular intraclavicular and mammary areas compare on both the sides by percussing. If there is a dullness on the right side, you might have to do tidal percussion, which I'll be explaining later. Next is auscultation, which you have to auscultate on all these four areas for the intensity of breath sounds, the type of breath sounds and any added sounds, that is any wheezing or crepitations or pleural rub. And most importantly, do not forget examining vocal resonance on both the sides. Can you take a deep breath for me? Can you say one one for me? One one. One one. One one. One one. One one. One one. One more, one more. Thank you. Enough, no? Next includes examination of the chest, which includes inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. Inspect the patient in the sitting position or you can, if the patient is in the semi-reclined position, you can examine from the foot end of the bed. Look for any features of volume loss, any drooping, supraclavicular hollowing, infraclavicular flattening or any scars, which could be thoracotomy, VAT scars, pneumonectomy or lobectomy scars. Also, look for intercostal indrawing, which is a common association in COPD patients. Next, we move to palpation. Palpation, you have to remember four things. First, palpation of trachea, which has to be preferably done after taking permission from the patient. I will be examining your windpipe. It might cause a little discomfort. If there is any discomfort at any point of time, please let me know. Examine the trachea, the position of the trachea by running your finger down the tracheal cartilages and also look for the gap. 
Along with this, the second most important palpatory finding is the cricosternal distance. Examine for the cricosternal distance. As you can see in this case, it is reduced. You usually expect minimum three finger gap between the cricoid cartilage and the upper part of stern. Next, examine the position of the apex. If you're not able to palpate it on the left side, please check on the right side also. As dextrocardia is an association, as you know, in Cartagena syndrome. Next, for the respiratory movements, examine, ask the patient, can you please take a deep breath for me? And the lower part. This finishes the palpation. Next, we go about the percussion. Percussion also starts with direct percussion of clavicle. And you need to compare on both sides by percussing the supraclavicular areas, infraclavicular, mammary, areas. Next, auscultation. Auscultate over the above set areas by keeping four things in mind, that is the intensity, compare the intensity of breath sounds on both the sides. You need to carefully auscultate the type of breath sound, that is whether it is vesicular or bronchial breath sounds, any added sounds which includes wheeze or crepitations and Lastly, the vocal resonance has to be checked in all these areas. Now, we shall go to examine the posterior part of his chest. Ask the patient to keep the hands over his opposite shoulder. So, as to increase the area where we can examine. Again, follow the steps of inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. Look for any scars or pigmentation, you can have nomenectomy or lobectomy scars which can extend posteriorly, any aspiration marks or scars which might be there. Next, palpation, look for the respiratory movements. Take a deep breath for me. And the lower part, can you take a deep breath for me? Thank you. Next is, next is percussion. You will have to percuss and compare suprascapular, interscapular, infrascapular areas and axillary and infraaxillary areas. Next, auscultation in the above set areas for the same intensity, the type of breath sounds, any additional sounds and also compare the vocal resonance in all these areas. Can you take a deep breath for me? Auscultate the axillary and infraxillary areas too. Can you say one one for me? One one. Okay. As you finish this examination, check for sacral edema. Conclude your examination by looking for pedal edema. Press just above the medial malleolus for about 30 seconds. This finishes respiratory system examination. In cases where it is required, for example, COPD, where you're suspecting a core pulmonale, you need to examine the relevant details of cardiovascular system. In cases where it is required, for example, COPD, where we are suspecting core pulmonale, you also need to examine the relevant features of cardiovascular system, which includes examination of JVP, palpable P2, left parasternal heave, palpable P2 or a loud P2. At the end of the examination, thank the patient. Offer him to wear the dress if you have undressed him in the first position and thank the patient. Thank you for letting me examine.